Okay, so in this video, we will consider four fundamental trigonometric integrals that can be tackled with simple u substitutions. So let's start with the integral of sine of mx, where m is a non-zero constant. So m could be, you know, 5, pi over 6, doesn't matter, as long as m is non-zero, we can solve this integral with a very simple u substitution, letting u be simply mx. Again, to find our dx as a function of du, we'll need to differentiate. Well, u is a function of x, we can differentiate u with respect to x. The derivative of a constant times x is just a constant. And so, multiply across by dx, and you find that du is m dx. But if you look here in our integral, we don't have m dx, we simply have dx. Well, to isolate for dx, we simply divide by m on both sides. And so 1 over m du is equal to dx. And now we're good to go. We have the integral of sine of mx, but mx is simply u, so this becomes sine of u. And dx is simply 1 over m du. As m is a constant, we can factor 1 over m outside of the integral course being a constant multiple, and we're left with a very simple integral, the integral of sine of u du. So we are asking, what function do we know of whose derivative is sine? Well, the derivative of cos is negative sine, and so the derivative of negative cos will be positive sine. So what we have here now will be negative 1 over m cosine of u plus c, and of course, we want the final answer back into a function of x. So we just replace now u by mx. So we'll get negative cosine of mx over m plus c. So there you go. If this was the integral of sine of, let's say, 7x dx, the answer would be negative cos of 7x over 7 plus c. And you can ask, of course, well, can we do the same thing with cos of mx? And the answer is obviously yes. And I will leave this one up to you to check. So if you integrated cos of mx with the same substitution, letting u be mx, you will arrive at this being sine of mx over m plus c. And here again, there are two ways to verify this, right? You can make the same substitution, carry out the integration, or if you cheat here and think of, well, okay, if you give me the answer, how can I verify this is the right answer to this integral? Well, this function is supposed to be an antiderivative to cos of mx. So if you differentiate this function with respect to x, you should obtain cos of mx, the original function. But again, I will leave the verification up to you. All right, let's consider now two more trigonometric integrals that can be tackled with a u substitution. And again, those are fundamental trigonometric integrals. So the first one that we'll look at is the integral of tan of x dx. Now, if you leave it like this, it may not be clear how to proceed. But if you rewrite tan as a function of sine and cosine, then the integral will become quite apparent. Now we have the perfect setup for a u substitution. If you look at cosine, the derivative of cos is negative sine, so up to a negative it's just sine, and sine is multiplying the expression. This is therefore a perfect setup for a u substitution, u being cos of x. find dx in terms of du, we must differentiate. So u is a function of x, differentiate u with respect to x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. 
if you look at your numerator, we want to solve for sine of x dx, multiply across by dx, will give you du is negative sine of x dx, negate both sides, and you'll get that negative du is sine of x dx. And now we can carry out the substitution. We have a 1 over cos, but u is cos. This will give us a 1 over u times sine of x dx. Sine of x dx is negative du, so times negative du. Well, we can obviously factor the negative 1 outside. So negative the integral of 1 over u du. And this is now a trivial integral. The integral of 1 over u with respect to u is the ln of u. So we get negative ln of u plus, of course, c. We want to give our final answer back in terms of x, and so u was cos of x. And so we have negative the ln of cosine of x in absolute value plus c. Now we could stop here, but I want to mimic the relation between tan and secant that exists for derivatives, also for integrals. If you remember, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So it would be nice if we could have the integral of tangent as a function of secant. Well, here we can pull this off using properties of logarithmic functions. The negative 1 is a constant multiple of the ln, and we can bring the negative 1 in the exponent of the argument. So this is ln of cosine of x to the negative 1. Right, if this looks a little fishy, just remember that ln of a to the b, for a and b being positive here, assuming, even if b is negative, this works as long as a is positive, sorry, is the same as b ln of a. So you can go backwards. If you have b times ln of a, you can bring b into the exponent of the argument. That's what we did here. We brought the negative 1 in the exponent of the argument, but of course, 1 over cosine of x is, by definition, secant of x. And so our final answer is the ln of secant of x in absolute value plus c. And that's it. So you see the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The integral of tangent is the ln of secant plus c. Well, our last integral in this video will be, well, the integral of cotan of x which, as you can imagine, will be very similar. So if we integrate cotan of x, again, if we leave it in this form, it's not clear how to proceed. But if we rewrite cotan in terms of sine and cosines, cotan is the integral of cosine of x over sine of x. And now, once again, we can make a very obvious u substitution, u being sine of x. The derivative of u with respect to x is simply cos of x. Multiply across by dx, and so du is cos of x dx. We can now substitute. We have a 1 over sine of x, which is 1 over u, times cos of x dx, but cos of x dx is simply du. As before, the integral of 1 over u du is the ln of u in absolute value plus c. If we want to go back to the answer being a function of x, but u is simply sine of x, so we have the ln of sine of x in absolute value plus c. And again, here we are done, but we would like to play the same game we played in the previous example. If you remember, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, so it would be nice to give the integral of cotangent as a function of cosecant also. Well, here we'll be sneaky. We'll bring a double negative, and we'll do negative 1 times negative 1, which is just 1, times the ln of sine of x plus c, and now we'll bring 
one negative inside of the exponent, or I should say inside the argument, as an exponent. So we'll have negative, the ln, of sine of x to the power of negative 1 plus c, but 1 over sine is by definition cosecant of x. So our final answer is negative the ln of cosecant of x plus c. And this mimics the relationship between the cotangent and the cosecant function for the derivative. So the integral of cotan is negative ln of cosecant of x plus c. So let's summarize our four integrals. So finally, if you integrate cosine of mx dx, where m is a non-zero constant, you get quite simply sine of mx over m, whoops, not sine, but sine of mx over m plus c. And if you integrate sine of mx dx, then you get the negative of cosine of mx over m plus c. If you integrate now tangent of x dx, as we have said, you get simply the ln of secant of x plus c. And if you integrate cotangent of x dx, you will get simply the negative of the ln of cosecant. And you can appreciate why tweaking the original answer we obtained in both cases to these two will help you remember those two integrals in terms of also the rules of differentiation. Right? If you think back to, as I've said, the derivative of tangent of x, that is positive secant squared of x, the derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared of x. And you have the same kind of positive-negative relationship with secant and cosecant that you have for the integral of tan and cotan. So you see the integral of tangent, ln of secant of x, integral of cotangent, minus ln of cosecant of x. So hopefully with this form, it will be easier to remember these two fundamental integrals. And of course, these are pretty straightforward. In our next video, we'll consider two additional fundamental trig integrals, being the integral of secant of x and cosecant of x. And the reason why I'm doing both of these in a separate video, as you'll see, is they are very subtle. We have to do something quite strange to arrive at a workable u substitution. But this will be the topic of our next video.